so back in December 2012, I was doing pastor's con at the university in Oslo. In December, we had minus 18 Celsius degrees. Uh, I had some friends coming over, as an example, from Texas uh, to Oslo, and it was pretty fun to see them running around in minus 18 outdoors. Uh, one of the things that, uh, one, one of the talks that I had there was actually, uh, what it, they don't exist anymore, but it's a government organization back then called NOSIS. Um, they were essentially an organization that were giving out advice to uh, small businesses and also to, uh, to people, you know, you and me uh, in Norway about security stuff. Uh, they do exist in a you know, different organization at the moment now. And back in 2012, I asked them if they would be interested in doing a talk at PasswordsCon, um, and because they were doing an annual survey about cybersecurity in Norway um, uh, amongst, you know, normal people and small businesses. And Norway, being a country with four and a half, five million people, uh, a small business in Norway is like up to uh, ten people. A medium-sized company is. 50 people and a big company in Norway is 200 people or more. That's pretty much a, a big company in Norway. Um, and they did a survey in the spring of 2012 and at Passwords.com in 2012 they presented the, uh, the results. This is the PDF. Uh, and having already spent quite a few years, uh, 12 years already, uh, no, 14 years cracking passwords before this, uh, talk. Uh, I was curious to see the questions and the answers they got. They asked about occupation, which is fair enough and nothing uh, interesting here. The number of employees in the organization, uh, employment description, you know, regular employee head of department, project manager, manager, executives, and so on. And moving on, what kind of education do you have? It's interesting just to see if the level of education can influence your choice in passwords, or if it is male, female, or if it is uh, knowledge of cybersecurity or not that will influence your choice in passwords. Now, there exist academic papers also out there that have been looking into this, and there's a distinct difference between, let's say, cybersecurity prof professionals and pretty much everyone else in choice of passwords and password security. Just like something as simple as using a password manager, there's a difference. Uh, they also asked about gender and age, male, female here. Um, uh, and they asked, uh, as an example, total number of passwords. Average minimum numbers of private pass passwords per person. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Password security. Uh, how did you get education on how to make good passwords? Well, no answer. Do not remember other websites, papers, friends, colleagues at work when studying. Um, now, and description of a good password. 10% wouldn't tell what is a good password. 3.6% said, I've, I have no clue uh, on what is a good password. And 86% uh, had an opinion. Now, my point of showing this, because all, the, all these years since th 2012, I have seen a gazillion and one password surveys from all over the world, commercial companies, academic research, and so on. And I have never been able to sort of like compare two different password surveys properly because of the way the questions are formulated, uh, the way they are asked. If, you know, I'm a white, privileged, old, fat male. So if I go out on the street and somebody wants to ask me questions in the survey, there is a difference whether there is a young, beautiful woman asking me or if, if it is some uh, uh, old guy uh, my age uh, wanting to ask me questions. There's also a difference between do I have to think about answering the question, will you give me 24 hours or do I have to re respond to you in like five seconds? As an example, in 10 seconds, don't look this up in your password manager. Tell me how many passwords do you have? This is a question that you can find in many password surveys. But there's a difference asking you this on the phone as an example. You have to answer within 10 seconds, uh, or if I give you 24 hours to think about it. 
And I have been traveling to many different countries. One of my hobbies is to go to uh, cities, uh, visit a cafe and sit down with random st strangers. Um, you know, I'm the guy, kind of guy who says, hi, I'm Per. Um, I'm a crazy password uh, uh, researcher, and I would like you to ask you a couple of questions. As an example, I asked the question, how many passwords do you have? And I say, I want an answer from you within 10 seconds. And what I have found, which is pretty consistent, is that at the beginning of my little survey, I asked this question, and at the end, I will also ask, so now, after all these questions from me, how many passwords do you actually think you have? And they usually have at least three times more passwords than they said at the end, beginning of my little survey. People don't know how many passwords do you, they have. And if I go to the next question, how many different passwords do you have? Because the question of how many passwords do you have, I have seen people that will interpret that question in many different ways. It's not a simple question to ask, how many passwords do you have? So how many different passwords do you have? And of course, if you're doing this face to face with people, you will probably see quite a few people blush when you come to this second question. Third question, how many accounts do you have? Because a password and an account can be two different things. How many accounts do you have? How many accounts do you think you have? And when I ask about how many accounts do you, do you have, I will also ask you, did you include work accounts, banks, payment cards, and customer loyalty clubs in your account of passwords or accounts? Because, yeah, I'm a member of the, uh, you know, uh, Virgin Atlantic Fly Me Somewhere in the World Club. I'm a, I'm a member of Walgreens to, and, and Target to, to buy groceries. And as a member, I get a 5% discount. Well, if you are a member of those loyalty programs, as an example, you probably also have an account where you can log in. And I also know back from, from Norway that a lot of people, they are a member of such loyalty clubs, but they have never ever logged in and they don't know if if it is possible to log in they don't know if there's a default password for that account that they should change they go just go to the grocery store or the clothing store and they want to buy something uh the person the cashier will ask you so do you have a membership with us and the answer usually is i have no idea okay what's your phone number uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you are a member. Oh, you have, uh, you know, uh, 50 Norwegian krona that you can use for this. Uh, it's a bonus from us. Do you want to use it as an example? And people are clueless that they have this account. And if that account represents $5, $10, or $100 or, or more in value, people are clueless. That can be stolen. And I used to work as a CISO for a hotel chain for three years before COVID. There were a lot of bad guys that would, or oh, girls, uh, that would hack into customer loyalty um, accounts in order to get free hotel rooms, and they would also be anonymous. So we saw people having, you know, illegal parties, teenagers throwing parties for friends in hotel rooms. So we had no idea who was actually in the room because they were using somebody else's loyalty points as an example. How many customer loyalty memberships do you have? Okay, fair enough. How many of those do you think you have ever logged into? I think this is a relevant question to ask in a survey because again, in many cases, it's like you don't count those accounts, you never use them, but you still have them and they can still be a, a problem for you. Also in your account of uh, counting of passwords, did you also include PIN codes? Because PIN codes are just really, really bad passwords. And again, when I ask people, they actually differentiate between a PIN and a password. So maybe I should be asking, uh, do you use passphrases as well? Because some people will say that they will just smile at me. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I don't use passwords. Okay, well, are you using passphrases? Yes those people actually do exist. Are passwords and passphrases and pins the same thing? 
Yeah, an API key. Yeah, that's actually a password. A cryptographic key, well, it's a password to me. Uh, but people don't see them as that. Do you use two-factor authentication? A very common question to ask in a password survey. Do you use two-factor authentication? Raise your hand if you're using two-factor authentication. Okay, excellent, perfect. But do you use two-factor authentication for all your accounts? Raise your hand. So most surveys, if any, are not asking this question. So we are ending up with Oh yeah, it's pretty good, like 90% of our employees, they are answering, or 100% of all our employees are answering, yep, I use two-factor authentication. And you just rickroll yourself like <laughs> a lot. You need to ask, do you use two-factor authentication for all accounts? But even with that question, another problem will be the fact that you don't know how many accounts you have. Where do you have them? Have you ever used them? Do you use two-factor authentication for all accounts at work? Because the previous question, was that about work or private life? When was the last time you deleted an account you no longer use? Raise your hand if you could remember the last time you deleted an account that you no longer need. Okay, so pretty much everyone. Now, if you go out in the street and ask people that question, it's fascinating to see that most people, they don't think about deleting unused accounts. Because when I've asked, asked people, why haven't you deleted those accounts? It's like, because I'm not using them anymore. It's, they represent no value to me. And if they don't represent any value to do you, which is, in most cases, wrong, those accounts, if hijacked by somebody else, they can be used to trick other people. So instead of being a part of the solution by deleting your old accounts, you will be part of the problem, having lots of accounts that other criminals can use and abuse against your friends. How many old accounts do you think you have deleted since you got your very first account? Let me ask one of the young members of the audience since you got your very first account when you were, I don't know, starting at school or something, how many accounts do you think you have deleted all the way back since you were like five, six, seven, eight, nine years? I have no idea, absolutely no idea. But what I do know, and I should probably be better as a sort of a password security professional, but uh, I know that my, myself, I also have lots of old accounts that I should have deleted, but it's just f boring <laughs> to spend hours, days, weeks deleting them. So one of the things that I've been discussing with colleagues in the industry, in password cracking industry about is, are there any ways for us to improve how users can very quickly, maybe automated, delete their accounts for unused services? That's a question for Dashlane, for LastPass, for 1Password, for Bitwarden, and so on. Can we create a standard that will make it much easier to authenticate your service and then delete your accounts? Uh, and also, last question for the audience. Have you ever changed password on an account without being told to do that or forced to do it? Now that we have changed the NIST standard from 2018, and the NIST standard says that you don't have to change your password anymore unless it is compromised or we have good reasons to uh, believe that your account has been uh, compromised, I think that that's a good thing that NIST made that the standard. Password Scan has been really helping out for many, many years to create the new version of the NIST standard that came about in, in, uh, in 2018. But I really, really think that a new challenge for us as a security community in the future will be to assist people in deleting old and unused accounts. We are getting more and more accounts that are just laying dormant. Uh, when I was working for the hotel chain, I went to the uh, customer loyalty club and I asked them, how long does our users actually stay members of the loyalty club? 
And the answer was pretty simple. They will stay members in our loyalty club until the day we can no longer receive emails from them. That's, you know, we will have it bounce back. Now, if you, if you know anything about email, there can be many, many, many cases where you will never get a reply saying that user does not exist. Meaning that we will have loyalty club members that will basically live forever. And I'm, a, I'm an atheist and I do believe I'm gonna die sometime. So that's a problem as well. We will have more and more members that actually no longer exist on planet Earth. So point of the talk is I have been talking to psychologists, to all kinds of people doing statistics and so on. And what I want to do and been working on now for 12 years is trying to come up with questions that cannot be misinterpreted and that also has a very thorough explanation on what do I mean by this question so that we can have a standard open source password survey available on GitHub or wherever that anyone can copy and use in their organization, in their company or at school and so on. So we can actually compare to different password service because they are asking the same questions the same way across companies, organizations, countries, and so on. And that's the point of my talk. Now also, just to back it up, back in 2012, when uh, this initial survey was presented, 10 years before this survey was done, I was working for a large organization in um, Norway and I cracked the passwords of the internal Windows uh, domain, Windows NT4 back then. Uh, I cracked all the passwords and I generated statistics about those passwords. And since I also had the usernames, the full name, phone number, address, and so on of all the employees and, and everybody connected to the Active Directory, I could do some pretty interesting statistics. And internally, the security uh, head of security, they also did an annual survey. And one of the questions that were asked is, is your password in compliance with the written password policy? And surprisingly, approximately 78% said, yes, my password is compliant with the password policy, the one that exists in writing. I knew the written password policy, and I cracked all the passwords. So I could say internally that, no, the answer isn't 78% compliance. It's approximately 8% of the passwords that are actually compliant with the password policy. So I could go back to the people doing the statistics and say, you are completely wrong with your answers. And that's a risk to the organization, and if it wasn't for me and my password cracking, you would be clueless about the risks you are actually facing. And that's why I do not believe in password surveys, at least not all the passwords that I've seen to date. If you are an idiot and I ask you, are you an idiot? You're probably going to say no, because you don't know you're an idiot. And if you are not an idiot, you will obviously say no when I ask you, are you an idiot? And if you ask people in a large organization or small organization, are you breaking the rules? The obvious question will be no. That's why I want to do a survey like this and make it open source so everybody can use it across everywhere. That's it. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, the question is, what do you want to do with the information you're going to get out of the survey? Well, I would like to do, you know, I will set up a survey that people can fill out anonymously uh, online. But I would also, you know, my point is not that, you know, I'm interested in the data to do my own research and see how this works out across the world. But if you want to do it with your employer internally, you know, you, you can just copy this. I, I'm, not, I'm not interested in 
learning about your employees and I'm not in interested in making money out of this. So just copy the survey and use it internally and you never have to reveal any information to me. But if other organizations like yours, as an example, are doing the same survey, then maybe you will be able to see if your users are <laughs> complete idiots or if they are, you know, doing passwords the way they are supposed to do passwords, as an example. Because I have seen organizations today trying to compare password surveys to other organizations, and it, 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 it's wrong. And most, my, well, my personal opinion, of course, most organizations, companies today, they have, they have absolutely no clue how much they are exposed to bad password security because they are just doing surveys. They don't crack passwords. They don't compare the cracked results to, you know, the kind of statistics that we have. Um, my apologies, I'm monopolizing the, the questions. Um, the, the reason I asked the question, Ara, what are you going to do with that? There is, and I'll make a statement, I'll be really careful with it, but I can justify it. So no matter how, what the password policy is as we speak on our organization, and I'm not talking about generating random passwords. Mm -hmm. So no matter the password policies, length, whatever it is, um, password crackers can crack more than 95%, let's say 90% of them, yep. within a reasonable amount of time, which is a day. Um, so having said that, the um, I understand this can be used for awareness, I guess, yep. which is the main thing. When, when a question is asked, then you get people trying to think about it. But um, it wouldn't create let's say, good practices when we tell people how to, or uh, when we suggest to them, why don't you use passphrases? Mm. Why don't you use uppercase as your first character? Yep. Or why don't you use an exclamation mark at the end, which used to be a suggestion a couple of years ago, so to make a complex password. Mm. Uh, the, the reason I'm trying to make it, and the purpose that I'm saying this is, um, I, I see there is, the, the, a, value for, for this kind of survey, for awareness, um, but we should focus on the end result of, let's see what we're going to do with passwords, because we, I think we're close to the end of, of it. And, yeah. and I think you also, you said that 10 years ago, Yeah. well, we're close to the end of passwords, but I'm going to be doing password talks for another 10 years, and here we are today, yeah. talking about and passwords. I, and I have yet to see an organization where the written password policy is equal to the password policy that has technically been implemented in just a single system. And if you look an, uh, throughout an organization with 50 different systems, you will probably see 50 different implementations of a password policy, and none of them equals the written password policy. It's to no surprise people are <laughs> angry about passwords. But again, we got to cut it off there. The next talk is coming in six minutes. If you want to discuss this from a linguistics perspective, uh, psychology, or anything else, please feel free to reach out on Twitter, LinkedIn, Signal, phone call, all kinds of channels. Thank you again.